Hi, this is Elijah with the Oxygen Team. And in this video, we'll be going over the repeater element in Oxygen. The repeater element is a visual loop builder that allows you to loop through posts, pages, custom post types, or ACF repeater fields, and visually design their layout in Oxygen. To show you how it works, we're going to work with a custom post type I've set up called Properties. So let's jump to the back end and let's go to Properties. And we have several properties listed here, each of which has a number of custom fields from advanced custom fields, as you can see. So we are going to edit the archive for this custom post type. To do that, we need an Oxygen template that applies to the archive for the custom post type, which I've set up under Oxygen Templates. So let's jump into there, and we'll go to Properties Archive. And this has just been assigned to Archive and Post Types Properties. Now let's edit this with Oxygen and set up a repeater. Now that we're in the builder, we first need to add a repeater. So let's click plus add and go to helpers and look for the dynamic heading under which you'll find the repeater element. Let's click to add it. The first set of controls we'll see are the query control set, the layout control set, and then the preview render buttons. Normal mode causes the repeater to render all results of the repeater query. As you can see here, I have one div for each property. If I switch to single mode, however, only the first result will be rendered. This can sometimes be easier when you're styling a repeater that's returning a lot of posts. For this example, we'll leave it on normal mode. Now let's jump into the query settings. This will look familiar if you've used Oxygen's Easy Posts element. We have default, which uses the query of the current page that we're on. In this case, we're on an archive, which means the archive is already querying all of the properties posts. So it'll return everything the archive normally returns with its default query. If you were on a single post or page, it would return only that post or page. So then you need to look at custom, which has several different options but they're all the same as the easy post elements. You can go in and query by post type, manually specify IDs. You can go to filtering and determine the taxonomies that are returned, posts by specific authors. You can go to order and change the way that the posts are ordered. You can also go to count and specify the number of posts that are returned and determine whether to ignore sticky posts or not. Under manual, you can use a query string to return posts. For this example, we're going to stay on default. The one new option in the query control set is the use ACF repeater checkbox. This allows us to actually query an ACF repeater and return its data instead of a post page or post type. We'll go over that here in a little while. First, let's build this archive template. So let's jump back and let's look at the layout options. Here, you'll see the normal oxygen layout options, which affect the way these divs in the repeater stack. For this example, we'll leave it at stack child elements vertically, which is the default. But if we were to set this div to a smaller width, we could then select the repeater and set the layout to stack child elements horizontally to achieve a horizontal list. To use the repeater, you simply need to drop elements into the repeater div, which is generated when you create the repeater. Let's look at the structure pane. As you can see, even though there are multiple elements being returned, we only have one repeater div, and this is where all of our work will take place. So let's drop a columns element into here and we'll start building this out. We're going to do a two column layout, so we'll choose 50-50. And then the real magic happens with repeaters when we start using dynamic data. Dynamic data pulls data from the post that's being queried at that point in the repeater. So 
if we choose the left column div and go to advanced background and choose the data button and choose featured image insert you'll see that the featured image for each post is being returned in each instance as appropriate. Now let's add a title. We'll add it directly in this div. So we'll add a heading and then we will double click the heading and use insert data from the top bar to insert title. And this will then insert the title of each post dynamically in the repeater list. Let's make that white so we can see it a little easier. Perfect. And then let's add some background color. We'll do a slightly transparent black. Great. And now let's change the height of this div so we can see the picture. Advanced size and spacing. And let's set it to 300. And then let's go to advanced background and change the background size to cover. And then we could go down and change the left and top values to 50%. Then we can go to primary and change the layout here to center our title, and then maybe put it along the bottom. Great, now it's time to fetch some more data from our properties listings. So let's go to the right hand column and let's add a heading. And we'll choose H3 for this. And let's double click the heading and use insert data to grab some dynamic data from the post. Now this custom post type has a number of advanced custom fields assigned to it, which means when we use insert data within the repeater, we can use the advanced custom fields button to see the fields that are available. In this case, we're gonna choose address. And when we click away and let it refresh, you'll see that the address for each property has been filled in. Great, let's duplicate this and let's add another dynamic data piece. Double click this, insert data, advanced custom fields, and let's do bedrooms. And we'll prepend this with bedrooms. And then we're gonna duplicate that and let's jump down here and set this one up to return bathrooms. So let's choose bedrooms, change that to bathrooms, and then highlight all this text. And we'll go to insert data and choose advanced custom fields. And we'll choose bathrooms, insert. And then click away so that we can see the number of bathrooms for each property. Great. Now finally, we'll duplicate this and we're going to grab the price field. So let's double click that, insert data, advanced custom field, and we're gonna look for price. Perfect, insert. Great, now let's add a class to all of these. We're gonna call this listing-data. And let's just drop that on all of these really quickly. And then we'll do some styling. Add class, add class. You could also add the class before you duplicate the first item uh, if you know that you want all of these items to have a specific class. So let's go to advanced typography and let's change the font size of these a little bit. I'm thinking something like maybe 18. Let's go up to 20. Okay, and then we're going to change the color. Something a little less dark. And then we're going to change the font weight to something like 300, maybe 400. 400 looks pretty good. And then we're going to go to advance size and spacing. And we're going to add some bottom margin. Now the last thing we need is a button to take a look at the property a little closer. So let's add a button. And we're gonna adjust the button colors to match the colors of our header. So we'll change the button color to kind of a charcoal and then use gold for the button text. 
and we're going to double click the button to edit it and change the label to view property. And then we're going to add a little bit of spacing above that button to move it down. And there we have it. Now we can make it look a little bit prettier by selecting the actual repeater div and styling that a bit. So let's go to advanced size and spacing and add maybe 36 pixels of margin on the bottom of that. Then we'll go to advanced background. Let's set the background color to a slightly off white and then advanced effects box shadow. And we're going to set a slight shadow on these elements. So let's drag this down and let's set zero horizontal offset, zero vertical offset. Make sure it's not set to inset. Shadow blur, let's do 25 pixels. And then let's do negative 10 shadow spread. And then maybe make it a little bit bolder here. Okay, so now we have a repeater that's listing our properties dynamically and returning advanced custom fields data for each listing. Finally, we can go into this button and use dynamic data to set it to the post's permalink, which will link us to the property. So let's go ahead and take a look on the front end at what we've set up. Here we are in our properties archive and all of our properties are being returned with the beautiful layout that we just set up in Oxygen. So that's how to use the repeater on something like a custom post type archive. This approach applies to any kind of archive in WordPress. Now let's jump over to a different site and take a look at using the repeater element to return advanced custom fields repeaters. So here we are on another WordPress install where I have a top list listing the top four hotels in a specific region. So as you can see, we have an advanced custom fields repeater set up on this post. So we have the entry number, entry image, entry name, entry price, entry description, and a book now URL. Those are all entered using the repeater. And we could easily add another entry by clicking add row here and typing in all the data. For this instance, we're going to use the existing data and we're going to edit the template that renders this post. Now, it doesn't have to be a template. If this post was not using a template, you could also just edit the post directly in Oxygen. But since we might want to have more than one top list post, I've set up a template that could render all of those for us. So let's edit this template. And here we are in Oxygen. So we have the post title and the post content being returned dynamically. Now we just need to return the repeater content. So let's add, go to helpers, and insert a repeater. Now we're going to jump back into the query settings, and we're going to use the ACF repeater checkbox. So check that, and then choose the repeater you'd like to use in case there are multiple repeaters present. So we'll choose top X list, which is the name of our repeater. Now we'll apply the query parameters, and then you'll see we have four items being returned, which reflects the number of items in the repeater on this post. So let's go ahead and start designing this. So let's add, and we're going to do a columns element, but this time we're going to do a three column layout. The left column we're going to change to be a little bit narrower, something like 20%, and then we're going to add a heading and we're going to double click this heading, use insert data, choose repeater field from the dynamic data options, and we'll choose the field from the repeater that we'd like to return, which in this case is entry number. So click insert, and then we'll click away and let it refresh, and now you see we have the entry number, 4321. Let's double click this and let's prepend that with a pound sign, and then we're going to scale this up quite a bit. So we'll move it up to 100 pixels. Now in the center div, I'd like to return the entry image. So for this, we're actually going to use an image element. So let's click Add and type image in the search and insert that. 
Great, now let's, on the properties pane, let's go to data for the image URL, choose repeater field, and from the field dropdown, we'll choose entry image and hit insert. Great, now we have an image for each one of our properties as listed in the repeater. Now in the right div, we're gonna list some of the text data that we have. So let's add a heading, and we'll choose an H3 for this. We're gonna double click, and insert data and choose repeater field. Go to the field dropdown and let's choose entry name. Insert. Now let's add a text element. Add text. We'll double click that. Insert data, repeater field, field, and entry description. Perfect. Now you can see we have dynamically populated text data as well as our image. Next, we're gonna add the price field. So we'll add text. And by now you're getting the rhythm of working with dynamic data in repeaters. So we insert data, repeater field, choose the field, and entry price. Insert. We're gonna change the font size a bit Let's make it a little bit bigger, but not that big. Back it down, maybe 22 pixels. And then we'll change the font weight a bit, maybe 400. Let's try six. And then let's size it down a bit to 18 pixels. Perfect. Now we need a book now button. So let's click add. Let's choose a button. And then let's go ahead and style this button to match our colors on this site. So we'll do a pink button. On hover, we will make it purple. And we need to make sure the text color stays white when we hover. Perfect. Now let's go to data and choose repeater field. And for this URL, we'll choose the book now URL and insert. And then let's double click the button and say book now. Now let's add some spacing below this text element. And then let's style the repeater div a bit as well. Go to advanced, size and spacing, add some margin on the bottom, do 50 pixels. And then advanced background, let's set it to white. And then let's go to advanced borders and set it to a four pixel border radius. And then advanced effects and let's do another box shadow so we'll do very dark shadow but fairly transparent and then we'll do a little bit of a vertical offset this time and then a little less blur and then a little bit of negative spread perfect now let's take a look on the front end and you'll see we have our list of hotels returned by our repeater element. So we only have to design this first instance and that design is used dynamically for all of the other repeater instances. Again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team and that's how to work with the repeater element in Oxygen. Thank you for watching.